Welcome to the Lone Star Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Williams. This week is episode 38. Our guest this week is Martha Velez of Oak Cliff Cultivators. How is everybody doing this week? Doing great. Thank you guys for having me. Bless, bless. Yeah, it's a hot one to Like, it's really hot outside. I agree. That's why the hair is up. It's too hot. <laughs> we got to like 100. I know we got to 100 degrees the other day here in Austin. It's only supposed to be 98. I got in the car at 6.45 p.m. and it said nine. It said 100, like one, and went down to 100. It's too hot for this in May. Exactly. And, and we'll t- maybe talk about it later, but because of that heat, we're already struggling as farmers with that heat. Yeah, it, we're, we're like, we're in a pretty bad kind of, not drought, but I mean, we need rain really bad, don't we? We do. We really do. It's been... It, and it's not just like that area. Every area is needing rain. And it's it gets depressing when you see like storm clouds on the way and all of a sudden they're gone. There's no rain. Yeah. There's nothing. You even get that smell. It teases you with that smell. It does. You feel like it's going to open up, but it doesn't. So what does Oak Cliff got going on these days, Martha? Wow. So Oak Cliff Cultivators, we are really busy right now. Um, we feel very blessed, but we have our harvest. We are it's right coming up upon us. Uh, we will actually be harvesting the week of June 13th. We have three new genetics. So I'm really excited about that. Um, the ladies are looking beautiful. It is causing a little bit of the heat is really, you know, kind of keeping us on our game for sure. Like it's just, you know, keeping those girls fed and watered and not getting too dry and just really having to watch the humidity and things. It's really uh, a little bit of a challenge, but it's not something we're not unfamiliar with. Thankfully, you know, being Texans, we kind of understand that we've been through it a couple of times already. So we feel a lot more prepared than ever before, but you know, when things like water coolers start, uh, messing up or pipes start cracking because of the heat already. It's like, man, <laughs> but we got it going. They'll be ready. Okay. You can't stop it. You can't stop the show. Like we know, we know the, what the Texas climate looks like, you know, no, like nobody doesn't know that it could get hot as early as April and stay as hot as late as December. That's right. That's absolutely right. And since thankfully we are already going on almost two full years of growing, uh, really probably closer to three, um, because we, our first harvest was November 7th of 2020. And so we're almost on three full years, just about of grow. And, and, you know, so we're kind of getting used to it. We're getting rhythm. We kind of already know we're finally at that place where we can kind of predict what our next steps need to be. It's just the heat came earlier than we expected for sure. So do y'all have any sort of plan in place given that, um, they've been doing this already. We're already looking at possible brownouts this summer. Considering we're already looking at brownouts now in the middle of May. Yes. Y'all have anything y'all are trying to like set up for like a backup plan if we do have a, a the grid go down or brownouts? Yeah. So we actually learned a lot from the the big freeze. Um a couple what it was that 2021. <laughs> Um, oh, we, learned a lot. we lost power for six days. So, and we lost a whole harvest during that time. So it was really hard on us. It was our second grow. Um, so we, we learned a lot from that and Eddie's background is emergency management. So thankfully he has created like the full plan. Like he has a full plan of what we're going to do and how we're going to handle it. And that really goes back to having some generators you know, but that kind of goes to with gas prices. And so it's all this business plan you got to have and think about and budget for. Um, and Eddie really does a great job on that, on that aspect for sure. Well, Cause that's what I thought of in my mind was y'all went through the freeze. And I know I talked with Eddie at one point about that, like the fallout that happened because when you said you lost a whole harvest over that and yeah. now that's a big deal. Yeah. It's a lot of money. It's a lot yeah. of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort. Yeah. And like you said, he has a background in emergency management, so that's going to come in handy, very much so. And mm-hmm. I'm hoping that it doesn't get to that, but at least it sounds like you guys are prepared for it. We're trying to. And that's also kind of why this time with this grow, we really strategically try to harvest in the early part of the summer, where before the last two summers, we were harvesting August 
uh, early September, but mostly in August, and it was killing us. So when Eddie started staggering out our schedule, he's like, I really want to push us toward early summer versus late summer because of the heat. So it's yeah, kind summer. of helped us a lot, you know, to prepare. So our girls will be ready for harvest June 13th. And then by the time we're drying and curing, we're, we're like first of July. So hopefully we can make it, you know, but if not, we have a game plan in place to, to prepare ourselves. And with that in mind, um, y'all take it, y'all have like a water backup plan as well, because obviously the power goes out. There's no yeah. pumps pumping water to locations. We do. We do. So we have these big tanks um, that we have on site and Eddie keeps them really nice and full. We both we do have city water. We also have pumps. So we have alternatives that we can use for water. Um, so we will definitely have that in mind. One thing that's weird is even with the heat, some of those PVC pipes and stuff, they, they crack and they break and then you lose water that way. So we're always having to maintenance and monitor and take care. Um, which Eddie is there at the farm now and he that's pretty much what they've been doing is just ensuring that everything is up and running and that the water coolers we have water walls you know trying to make sure everything's prepared and ready to go for the heat uh I wanted to ask what it feels like winning so many awards (laughs) every time time there's like something going on it's like y'all are stacking a new trophy on but I don't know if you can hold all of the trophies on one table anymore you know what, Austin? We are we're very blessed. Uh, we are humbly blessed. It's funny every time we go and we win an award, it's still shocking. I don't. It's so funny. We're still like always like really, really? yeah. You know, it's it's like the first time. Um, we are getting to where I'm going to have to buy a special case or like something. But we're really excited about it. I really think it goes back to just the passion we have for the plant, the respect we have, ensuring that it's high quality and craft, Eddie. Matt, when it comes to growing, that is Eddie's passion and his focus, you know, so he laser focuses on that and and he really has gotten his SOPs down, his standard operating procedures down and and he makes sure that we follow those to the T, like he is on point with that. Um, I just kind of go in there and he points me where I need to go and that's kind of what I do. That is his lane and, you know, that is his baby. So I take such pride in that for him. Um, and he and the guy and Robbie, uh, one of our uh, assistant growers, he, they, they work hard in making sure that we're going to have high quality, great craft products, um, every time that they grow. Yeah. You have a winning formula. There's your SOP. You have a winning formula. Don't mess up the winning formula if it's working, right? (laughs) That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm, I imagine in my mind, y'all are going to have one of those like things that looks almost like a China cabinet (laughs) shelves and just trophies everywhere. Like the, like the kid who goes to like the cheerleading camp and has all the awards. Thank you. Yeah. I bought a little like football case and I put those little cups in there for us and the little ring and stuff so we can carry that. Cause we got to be mobile. We're, we're used to being mobile and doing all the different events. So we like to bring that around with us. And, and it's a great way to start sparking conversation. Like if anything else, we're big on education. And so when people walk by and they see those trophies or they see, they're always asking, it brings up the question you know, what is this? How did you win this? What is, you know, and it just really is a great conversation starter and it brings people over who may not have thought to stop. Um, so it, it's always been a great, that is one reason why we do love taking our words everywhere, even though, you know, it is pride as well, but it's a great way to start having conversations with people. I was, I'm curious, like, so what, what we're kind of, I don't want to say we're done with COVID, but we're coming out the other side of COVID. And what is the social scene looking like as far as events go? Are you, are you seeing that like, you know, things are coming back to life almost? Oh, Austin, it is. We're so excited about that. So that's kind of my lane I, I'm in our company. So it's really Eddie and myself, as you guys uh, might know, Eddie really focuses on our grow and ensuring that we have a great product. I really focus on educational retail and the event side. So I love for us to go out as often as possible. Uh, we're mostly out every weekend. We're somewhere every weekend. And it's mostly just to kind of get out and start talking to people and using that opportunity to educate. And what we have noticed recently is more people are venturing out. They're attending the events. Um, I find that it is personally really more beneficial to us when it's really great local markets. Like we love going to the local markets, art markets, things like that. Um, I love the type of people we meet and um, it's, you're going to meet people that are 
pro or against, but it always has a great conversation starter. So for us, we are seeing a lot more people come out to the events, which is really exciting. Um, And we're seeing more and more events coming out on the market. So we're really excited about that. And we love being in our local community. I don't think people quite estimate correctly how important an an in-person event is. I know that when I first started doing this type of work, I had people ask me, well, how can you grow your business and how can you grow? I mean, people follow you or reading your material. And the simplest thing was go to events in person and have a business card ready because exactly. people will collect these cards. They'll go back and look at them. They'll go check these websites. out. Hey, I, I don't remember if I remember talking to this guy or not. And then they go look up your website and now you have a new visitor, possibly have a new subscriber. You have a new customer mm-hmm. all because in person event and you handed a card out. Exactly. And and not only just in-person events in the cannabis industry, but in-person events in all facets. So um, I volunteer a lot. I'm a big volunteer. I do a lot with my local school. So I volunteer one full day a week, every week. I'll be there on Friday for a carnival, spring carnival we're having. And I always wear my Oakland cultivator shirt. I do have one with no leaf just for the school environment. But a lot of people will walk by and they always ask questions. What is Oak Cliff? You know, what do they do? What, you know, what, where do you, how are you a part of this? And we always have conversations. Um, and I love it because like in that, I'm working with the schools. So we're talking like administrators, district people. I'm always involved, always have my shirt, always use it as an opportunity to educate. Um, we do local markets all the time and, you know, and it's just getting in there. You have to be boots on the ground. That's the only way where you're going to get your name out there is to really hit the pavement. We've learned that right away. There's only so much social media is going to take you only so much other things are going to do, but being boots on the ground in person, networking, um, helping sponsor great opportunities. Like, um, like we do a lot with, um, the Texas cannabis collective, but we also work a lot with inform Texas. You know, we try to help and be a local and try to really support all of the organizations that are in reality supporting us and helping us move further in our industry. And it's really getting to know all of those people, walking around, introducing yourself, being part, taking action, not just words. I think all of that stuff really works to help build a reputation for you and your brand, for sure. I want to add to what you, you just said, and it's something I learned as a mass communication student going to Texas State University is that it's a great business strategy to support a nonprofit, especially when they do like social welfare reform of some sort. And that's not me trying to say, hey, guys, you should donate money to the Texas Cannabis Collective. Right. It's just in general, people love seeing a business that is involved with their community and involved with a nonprofit that is working to help a community out. And for some reason you can do a, one of these drives for that. And people love a business that's involved with that. They just love it. And they'll spend money just over that. It's a great business strategy. It really is. You know, it's, you can read, you can try or think all these things you want to think about with regards to business. But in reality, if you're getting into business just for the money, if that's your only thought and the only thing you're thinking about, you really are going to have a hard time succeeding. I really think it goes back to what are you doing? Because you have to be able to communicate with your customers. You also have to be able to connect with them. You have to have a passion for what you're doing, a respect for what you're doing but also giving back to those who came before you or those who are leading the path, right? And with us in cannabis, we are trying to fight a stigma more than anything. We're trying to get laws changed. And if we don't support those who are really there and putting forth that effort, we're not going to go anywhere anywhere as a business. We need to support them. We need to use that and our voice to help push them forward because they're speaking for us. We're going to go into our first sponsor break here at the Lone Star Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Williams. This week, it is episode 38. Our guest is Martha Velez of Oak Oak Cliff Cultivators. We'll be right back after these sponsor messages.
Thrive Apothecary offers an experience truly unique from anything else in Texas, a full-service cannabis solution that is doctor-owned and offers customers every level of cannabis legally available in Texas. From traditional CBD products to emerging hemp-derived THC edibles, smokables, and now medical cannabis. As a licensed medical cannabis provider, prospective patients from anywhere in Texas can book a sponsored online eligibility consultation to determine if they qualify for a medical marijuana prescription from the comfort of their own home. Plus, for Texas veterans, the first prescription appointment is donated by Thrive. Visit thrivetx.com for more information. Oak Cliff Cultivators is a sponsor of Texas Cannabis Collective and the Lone Star Collective podcast. Oak Cliff focuses on quality assurance with their hemp products while providing customer service to help you discover cannabinoids to meet your needs. Their product line includes hemp flour, pre-rolls, CBG tinctures, edibles, Delta Eat, and merch. For more information on their product's quality or to shop online today, visit oakcliffcultivators.com or contact them at info at oakcliffcultivators.com. Welcome back to the Lone Star Collective Podcast, distributed on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Facebook, and much more, to give Texans information regarding policy, industry, and culture. Here is this week's host, Jesse Williams and Austin Sam Hariri. Welcome back to the Lone Star Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Williams. I'm joined this week by co-host Austin Zam Hariri. This week is episode 38. Our guest is Martha Velez of Oak Cliff Cultivators. How is everybody doing? Doing good. Yeah, I love yeah, the conversation, conversation so far. Real, real quick, uh, just, just so we can get on camera, camera, I got me and Martha <laughs> both showed up with like the same exact shirt on. We did, and it was not planned. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, on, on my side, just because you know we, you know, you know we love to represent the Oak Cliff family. It's yeah, so best I can yeah, do is put up with the same shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I. This is one of my favorite shirts. Um, I tend to wear it out. It's it's pretty it's pretty subtle. Like it's not like slamming in your face, but like it catches your eye. I can see what you're talking about. How. Uh, you, know, um, you know, just, just wearing, wearing something, something like that really, really uh, open, up open up a conversation because it's, I, it's happened, happened to me personally before. <laughs> yes. Best I could do was this. The, <laughs> the rare one of a kind Texas Cannabis Collective coffee mug. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I, still I still have a very, very few amount of those. I'm going to uh, be doing one from you. They're cute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. In fact, I've, I've, I've set, set them aside, aside um, just, just to like hang one up. But next time I see you or Eddie, or, Eddie or next time we connect at an event, I think hopefully this weekend, that I'm definitely bring one over for you guys. Perfect. Sounds good. I think we're supposed to see Sunday. Is it Sunday? Yeah. Deep Ellum, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, we'll be there. <laughs> so something that came across my mind is, is y'all got this long product line is y'all are Oak Cliff. Have y'all thought about making Oak Cliff bars? <laughs> Funny, Funny, we have. We have been talking about that. So there are a few things we've been talking about, but you know, we may get there for sure. Delicious, nutritious Oak Cliff bars. I love it. If I love it. That's a great idea. I like the way it sounds. I imagine that people who go rock climbing, isn't that what's the picture that's on Oak Cliff bars? Like a guy climbing a rock. It is, yes. yes. But yeah, you need that for your joints when you're done. <laughs> especially if you're going, especially if you're going up Enchanted Rock. I know that that's for sure. right. That's, that's right. right. You're, you're gonna need it, especially once you get up to the top. <laughs> oh, my back, oh, my legs. Oh God, help me. <laughs> You'll need it for celebration up and recovery down. <laughs> what have y'all added to your product line lately? What's new for Oak Cliff? 
So right now, the biggest thing, of course, uh, it's about a month old now, but it's going to be our Mango Tahine Delta 9 gum drops. We're really proud of those. Um, they won the, uh, I want to say it's uh, the most creative uh, cannabis creation uh, for the last awards that we received. Um, it was a really cool award. It tastes amazing. And one thing I love about it is we really got that recipe down. Uh, we do it in, in collaboration with our partners down in Sweet Sensei and they help with our manufacturing, but they allow us a lot of autonomy in what we want and how we want the gumdrops to be. And we got it down to that one-to-one. So it's really exciting. It's 14 milligrams, Delta 9, 14 milligrams of uh, CBD, including some other cannabinoids in there. So that's big. We have a few new ones coming out pretty soon. We're just waiting for the testing, but we got them back today. So I'm really excited. Um, We will release our first loose leaf tea. We've been having a lot of people ask us about that. I know we're getting in the heat, but I have so many clients who already use the flower. They crush and create their own teas, and they've been asking for a tea. So we, we're really excited about that one coming out. That should be out in the next week or two. And then uh, we have a couple new pre-rolls coming out, and we also will have our new genetics. June 13th, we harvest. We'll have three new genetics. So we're really excited to see what we produce from those other than just pre-rolls. Eddie and I really like to take that testing at the end of harvest. Once we've dried and cured, we really look at the cannabinoid and terpene profiles, and then we like to design products based on those. So once we get that final testing, I know we'll have some new stuff come out for sure. My recommendation, recommendation anybody, anybody making, making tea, tea is if you have one of those, everybody calls them K cups, Keurig, Keurig coffee, coffee makers. makers. Mm-hmm. You get one of those little custom coffee, coffee things, things where you put, put your own grind, grind grounds, grounds inside, inside of it. it. And, and then, then you, you put, put your hemp tea, tea in it. And, and I, say I say circle it through like eight, nine, nine times. It gets all the flavor you'd ever want, all the cannabinoids through. And it'll help you go to sleep. It will. That's my personal testimony. It will. You're right. And the one we're creating will have chamomile, a little lavender. So it is more for nighttime. Shut the brain off nice and relaxed right before bed. I'm curious, what is the testing side of, of, you know, ensuring quality products like, can you describe that a little? Yeah. So for example, uh, with the tea, for example, we, we, uh, we create a few batches and then we will usually bag more than we need. We send it off to our lab with this one. We did new bloom labs. We do use new bloom most, most often. Um, I want to say pretty much 99% of the time. And, um, I think the only times we haven't used new bloom is for awards, you know, uh, depending on where we need to send those for testing due to the awards that we enter. Um, but we will send it to new bloom. They test it for us and what they are looking for and what they report to us is really going to be a profile of your Delta nine THC, your total THC, your cannabinoids, your terpenes, things like that. Um, what we are trying to do is really we, right now we focus a lot on Delta nine, of course, because that's our compliance right now, but we're also kind of shifting ourselves just a little bit. And we're starting to practice on really trying to meet the total THC as well, because we're already hearing that from the federal government that it, we're probably looking at total, total THC, THC and certain, certain regulations. regulations. And so, so we're, we're kind of practicing, practicing that slightly. Um, um, still within compliance for sure of Texas. We always look at Texas, Texas first. Um, and, and so, so we, we look at that, that that's something we look at. But for me personally, I'm really big into the cannabinoid and terpene profiles because that's what I use when I'm talking to clients and and they they come up and they're telling me what what they they want to use the product for. For For me, it truly helps to understand and know what my flower has, what terpene profiles are in there, what cannabinoids are in there, what are the strengths and how to break those down. And so that's kind of what I really love to look at. And for me, we we have Hawaiian haze that is 3% terpenes, terpenes, which is almost unheard of, but that that terpene terpene profile is just amazing. It's going to be really great for focus, focus, but it gives you energy. energy. It's It's just a great product, product, but if you know those, which is why why we do full panel panel testing as well, we don't just do... You know, you know, pass, pass or, or not, not based on Delta 9, 9 just, just the, the, the basic, basic compliance. We love to do full panel testing on our final products for that them. reason, because exactly. then we can really we target sure where we have so and many. What they're and for. even like with my tea, you know, I did a lot of prototypes with it and, and I had just my family try it. Tell me three words. How does it make you feel like that kind of, you know, 
What do you feel? How does it, you know, do I need, what does it make you think of? Be conscious of how you're feeling and what you're thinking. Um, and so we kind of look at that and we get to play around with that. My favorite prototype testers are my mom and Eddie's mom. Those are my two favorites because <laughs> they are the least likely, you know, they're the least likely to, when we first started the, the company, they were the least likely to ever want to try any type of CBD product. Um, we still can't get them to smoke it, but I can get them to use the gummies, the tinctures, the salves, and now the teas. And so I love when they use it and they're telling me things like, man, I had a great night's sleep or, or my mom has rheumatoid arthritis in her hands and she's like, me, I didn't have to stretch them. Like they feel great. I feel like my hands are, you know, 10 years younger. Um, my, my mother-in-law has arthritis in knees and I could walk, I could dance today when she was dancing with my daughter one night, you know, just little things like that. They, to me, are my favorite to get feedback from. Um, but yeah, we, we always love to take feedback from our clients. We always love to ask them, especially if they're repeats. We have some where we're do certain events and they'll come every time and they'll buy the same product. And I always love to ask, why do you pick that product? What do you feel when you use it? You know, what feedback can you give? So we're always open to feedback. Eddie and I believe in growth and we can only grow by getting that constructive feedback, good and bad. It's funny. My, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite experiences, I did a stand up comedy set with the Oak Cliff shirt on. Um, <laughs> and later that night, I uh, was having a conversation with a gentleman who he was like, Oh yeah, I know Oak Cliff. He's like, I was like, I remember Eddie and he was telling me all about his experience in Granberry. Apparently y'all had done an event out there. And yes. you're right. And so they had this, yeah, he was like, he, I guess he was a veteran as well. And so uh, they just had this, uh, it was cool to have that uh, name recognition with Oak Cliff and in, in Fort Worth, like totally like not cannabis related at all, but just to see people out on the street, like actually recognize, um, you know, your, you, you know, the, what y'all are doing out there as far as events go. Yeah, we we take so much pride in that. Um, you, like I said, even going to the schools, I have one that says Oak Cliff Cultivators without the leaf as big, but it's still on there. And I love when teachers walk up to me like, are you Oak? like, dude, how do you know them? And I'm like, well, I, you know, I'm owner of Oak Cliff. Oh, really? I've tried this product and that. And, you know, uh, and what do you I, recommend for this? Or I need it for my husband, you know, like that, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. And so it's really great when they recognize the name or parents or anybody that's walking by and sees it. Um, that's always pride. But when you go out of the city and people recognize that, that gives us a lot of pride as well. And we do have some great people who who follow us who go to our events and they they are just amazing i mean they're they're really what's supporting us and what's making keeping us going they motivate us especially when they're coming back and saying this product really works and here's why we love that feedback what product would you say is the best seller right now for oak cliff <laughs> our mango tahini delta nine hands down we we had like 120 i think of those and we sold out in less than four weeks like that was a big one and i really think it goes back to really high quality um it, it's right there with our hawaiian haze too and, and again a hawaiian haze is a three-time award winner and three different awards which really brings great recognition that it was three different completely different awards and and they've won every time uh, it's a great flower. So when it comes to flower, I, I definitely would say Hawaiian haze is the big one. Um, but our, our D9s are, are for sure award uh, contending right now. Was Delta 8 like a big seller before y'all started putting the, the, the Delta 9 stuff on the shelf? Yes. So I would say um, first is going to be our D9 and a Hawaiian haze. And then it's still our watermelon lime and tahini Delta 8s. Um, that come in third for sure. We have a lot of clients that love that for sleep and have made that part of their sleep regimen um, because it has a lot of mercy in that one. And so it is one that is going to be great for nighttime. Um, my mom uses it and Eddie's mom uses it just for that. It helps keep the pain down and inflammation down while they're sleeping and allows them to get a great night's rest. Interesting. I'm, I'm not familiar with myrcene for for sleep. Usually, I'm a sour diesel fan mm -hmm. and I'm used to limiting a mirror scene being the thing that I'm like, Oh, I can think clearly I can be active. I don't want to go to bed. I don't want to go to sleep. I'm not groggy. So it's kind of strange hearing this 
you're seen as helping people it get is. Good night's rest. Yeah, I know. And it's funny. We were thinking about that too when we first started looking at it. But even for me, it is like I'm, I have a great night's sleep with our watermelon lime and tahini for sure. Any, any thoughts from you, Austin? Um, I, I mean, every, you know, every time I, I see you guys out, you like, we've done events together. It's, uh, it's always a, a wonderful experience because, you know, I, I see the conversations happen right there. And, um, you know, I remember in speaking of, of just, you know, all of the you know contributions that, uh, you give back, you know, y'all were sponsors at the, the cannabis policy conference in at Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. um, as you said before, you know, y'all have done work with several other nonprofits. Um, and it's just mad respect to just see, see what you guys are doing, you know, from, from a business standpoint, from a, you know, just from a social ethics standpoint, uh, that's why the relationship is so, is, is so close because, um, you know, you guys, it's like you guys are on the street with us. <laughs> we are, we try to, uh, you know, support as much as we can. You know, I know we've done the, um, the parades, marching in the parades with you guys in Fort Worth, you know, we, we follow you. We try to re yeah. resupport that as much as possible again, because you guys are really helping us progress forward as a state. And we need you guys. We appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. We are going to go into our next sponsor break here at the Lone Star Collective. I'm your host, Jesse Williams. I'm joined by co-host Austin Zam Hariri. Our guest this week is Martha Velez for episode 38 of the Lone Star Collective. We will be right back after these sponsor messages. Thrive Apothecary offers an experience truly unique from anything else in Texas, a full service cannabis solution that is doctor owned and offers customers every level of cannabis legally available in Texas. From traditional CBD products to emerging hemp derived THC edibles, smokables, and now medical cannabis. As a licensed medical cannabis provider, prospective patients from anywhere in Texas can book a sponsored online eligibility consultation to determine if they qualify for a medical marijuana prescription from the comfort of their own home. Plus, for Texas veterans, the first prescription appointment is donated by Thrive. Visit thrivetx.com for more information. Oak Cliff Cultivators is a sponsor of Texas Cannabis Collective and the Lone Star Collective podcast. Oak Cliff focuses on quality assurance with their hemp products while providing customer service to help you discover cannabinoids to meet your needs. Their product line includes hemp flour, pre-rolls, CBG tinctures, edibles, Delta Eat, and merch. For more information on their product's quality or to shop online today, visit oakcliffcultivators.com or contact them at info at oakcliffcultivators.com. Welcome back to the Lone Star Collective Podcast, distributed on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Facebook, and much more, to give Texans information regarding policy, industry, and culture. Here is this week's host, Jesse Williams and Austin Sam Hariri. Welcome back to the Lone Star Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Williams. I'm joined this week by co-host Austin Zam Hariri. This week is episode 38. Our guest is Martha Velez of Oak Cliff Cultivators. How is everybody doing? I think we like it got cut like cut out there for a second. Oh, I was saying we're ha I'm having a great time. I love the conversation. Awesome. You, Austin, how you doing? 
You're still muted, buddy. You haven't unmuted yourself. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, this technology sometimes is, is moving too fast for a kid who grew up with like advancing technology. So <laughs> the answer is always blame it on Skynet. That's Skynet. Right. Robots are taking over. Uh, <laughs> real quick, I wanted to transition into something. Um, you know, one of the reasons that I always, you know, that 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 I was excited to talk to you, Martha, is that like, you know, from somebody who's watched the cannabis space develop um, into what it is now, we've seen a lot of women at the forefront uh, doing a lot of. Uh, leading and, and heavy lifting. And so I, I would just like to hear your opinion uh, on that and uh, kind of your experience uh, working within in the cannabis industry as a woman. Yeah, definitely. So when I first came on the scene um, back in early 2020, uh, really February, I mean, sorry, 2019, when the law passed, you know, for me, when I started researching it at the forefront, I felt like it was very male driven. And then, and, and in some ways it still is, but when I really dived into the industry and started networking and started to get out there and I realized, like you're saying, there were so many amazing women who were leading, be that attorneys, um, lobbyists, you know, even our shop, like really great shop owners, our retail spaces, a lot of the retail spaces I've collaborated with are a lot of really amazing women. And um, I mean, when you walk in and you talk to them and the education that they have about what they do each and every day is just truly inspiring. And it goes on even to banks and different places. There are so many women who are actually on the ground as well, pushing and leading in our industry, especially here in Texas. Um, and, and I really feel that they're amazing trailblazers. As a woman in the industry, I think what we bring to it Two is when we think about cannabis, a lot of times that health and wellness side of it, it's great for all of us. But I think so many women don't understand due to stigma, how amazing it can be for them, how amazing it can be and make you a better mother. It can make you a better wife. It can help you in so many different ways. And yet we have this stigma that it's not okay for a woman to enjoy cannabis, to smoke, to any of those things. And so it's having to truly re-educate and help women understand how important cannabis can be for their bodies and how it will help impact everything else around them. Um, and so I love to surround myself by these women. I love to talk with them, go visit their retail spaces. I love to see how each and every one bring, brings their own taste to it. Um, my passion is working and surrounding myself with women who are pushing our industry forward in the sense that um, different attorneys like Lisa Pittman um, and then we, you know, different activists like Lisa um, Sewell and, and different, you know, uh, just having all these women who I want to learn from and I want to, you know, really understand their stories and where they come from to shop to the retail spaces who are nurses. I have so many nurses that are opening retail stores and listening to their stories of why they're doing it and what they saw when they were working in the emergency rooms. I'm thinking of a, a store owner in Ditton. Her name's Nicole. And she, her big reason was I was an ER nurse for a long time. She's still a flight nurse. And I saw the impact that prescriptions were doing to people. And I knew cannabis was a great alternative and just learning from them. Um, so I really feel that women in this industry, we need to work together to help break the stigma and to tell other women it is OK to enjoy cannabis, to use it for so that it will make you a better mom and a better wife. At my last event, we were at the Oak Cliff Brewery. I had two moms come up to me and said, you know, one thing is we partnered with a bookstore, a local bookstore, um, Who's Books here in Oak Cliff. And. Um, the owner of the store was amazing and allowed me to curate some books for her uh, store. And we held some educational series at her store as well. And we brought nurses, uh, cannabis nurses down from Houston to do a presentation. And, and we were really focused on women and women's health. And these two moms said, I saw on your Instagram or I went to your store and I never knew until then that it was OK for me to tell people that I enjoy pre-roll at night to help me sleep that I need this for the stress and the anxiety, whatever it might be. And they just, it's, that's impactful when you get that feedback that it is okay. It's okay to do it. And it's okay that your mom, that yeah. you try it and use it. It's my wife has pointed out, there's no problem on our street 
with the moms getting together, whether it be in the afternoon, the weekend, sitting down with two bottles of wine yeah. and having these bottles of wine over the course of the evening. And nobody, nobody says anything about it. But the moment you show up with the pre-roll yeah. and they smell that, they look at you and give you this, this, this eye, but the stink eye. Yes. Like what's wrong with you? And it's like, there's, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing and there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing either. Right. And one of the moms actually mentioned that. She said, I have friends that are popping pills and drinking alcohol, for antidepressants and alcohol at the same time, but want to judge me because I want to smoke a CBD pre-roll, you know, that has little to no THC in it, but it really helps me with my mood. It helps me with sleep and it helps me be a better wife and mother. But yet I'm judged for that, you know, and so it's just telling them it's okay to do it. Um, even at our pop-ups now, we're carrying some books and one of them is, you know, it, it, it's pretty much titled um, a Mother's, uh, I think it's Women of Weed and then another one that we have for moms. And they, they love seeing that and they, it grabs their attention and they want that, you know, and, and it's helping them break that stigma and saying it's okay. I'm curious, are you, so you said you did a little mini series uh, events and, and um, are you planning on doing more of these? Yes, we truly enjoyed it. So yeah, we do. That was our first time. So we did a three part mini series with Who's Books. Um, and our focus was really bringing it back to not only education, but tying it to a book to research based practices. Um, and so we wanted to to really bring that to the forefront. So I will we do plan to continue the first two sessions were very woman led. So it was pretty much pretty much my testimony, what is the difference between CBD, THC, and how to explain it to your kids, to your parents, all of those things and breaking the stigma. And then the second session, we had some nurses come from Houston, our Cannabis Nurses Network, their MC Wellness Group, and they came and they did a whole session on women. But then the third one we did with Who's Books, it was a grower series where Eddie taught uh, pretty much a grow course for those who are really interested in getting in the industry. Of course, all three had great feedback. We had a lot and we've been asked to do them again. So we'll, we will continue those. And we are always looking to partner with others. I had a store recently reach out in McKinney that wants me to come out and pretty much reteach that same session. Um, and I, and we've had some inquiries for Eddie as well. And, and we're passionate about education. I was in education for 16 years. And I know the only way to break the stigma is to take time to educate the masses. So as we begin to wrap it up here this, of this last segment for the Lone Star Collective, any final thoughts you want to get out that you hadn't get, didn't get to say before and plug where people can find your products and any events you may be having having come up? Perfect. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, the biggest thing, the challenge that you need to overcome, especially if you're getting in the industry, is be active and help educate. Um, help us break the stigma. Do the right thing because it's the right thing to do always. Um, and for us, really, you can find us at oakcliffcultivators.com. I definitely encourage you to follow us on Instagram at Oak Cliff Cultivators um, or even Facebook. We always are somewhere every weekend. Um, so please come out, visit us. Let's talk. I'd love to help answer any questions or collaborate in any way. We're always open to that. You heard it, oakcliffcultivators.com. If you didn't hear the the sponsor messages we had going on earlier, oakcliffcultivators.com. And if you want to actually get in contact with them, you want to write them something, info at oakcliffcultivators.com, correct? Yep, that's absolutely correct. Austin, you have any final things you got to say? No, I'm just, I, I love this uh, business. It's uh, family owned, you know, uh, veteran owned. Uh, they're, they win tons of awards. They're community leaders. Um, we should we should literally like do a podcast with these guys every month. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate the support you guys, you guys give awesome. us. Thank you so much. Of course, thank you. Thank you guys. Well, that is going to do it for this week of the Lone Star Collective podcast. I'm your host Jesse Williams. I'm joined by co-host Austin Zam Hariri. This week was episode 38. Our guest was Martha Velez of Oak Cliff Cultivators. You can find more information at oakcliffcultivators.com. You can message them at info at oakcliffcultivators.com. We're glad you could have joined us this week. We thank you for your time, and we hope everybody has a great week. Adios.
mil 